Hello and welcome to the Hole in My Heart podcast. This is episode 212, how we are doing 2024 differently. Yeah, guys, welcome to, we're going to call it the glasses gang, because we've all got glasses on. I only need them for reading, but I do need them. Uh, welcome to the Hole in My Heart podcast, where we talk about how the gospel is good news for everyone every day. We are coming at you from the lovely... Christmassy WCST radio studio in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And I am your host, Lori Krieg. And I have alongside me my husband and favorite licensed therapist, Matt Krieg. Hey, Matt. Hi. How are you doing? Doing good. Are you glad to not be the only one with glasses? With glasses. Yeah, I'm, I'm surrounded by nerds. <laughs> Literally awesome. every time I'm wearing them, Matt comes in with glasses on his face since he was 13 or eight years old. And he goes, Hey, nerd. <laughs> what? That's mean. It's you. You're looking in a mirror. But I do also have with me, with us, our friend and fellow nerd and most professional radio voice among us, producer Steve. Hi, guys. I think I want to use that when my wife is wearing her readers. Yeah. Just call her a nerd. Because it's cute. It is. Nerds are cute. They are cute. Okay. <laughs> Today, guys, we want to invite you uh, to reflect on the year. And uh, before you go rolling your eyes too much, sometimes when I get to like end of year reflection stuff, I'm like, all right, pass. Give me the next podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, we hope that what we're going to share with you that just started from a ripped out of my journal page for 2023 and another I'll show it to the camera if you're watching this on YouTube, ripped out of my journal page. It just says family 2024 goals. And we're just going to talk about uh, how that has developed and progressed and how we actually like it. And I wondered if we'd be resentful of it. But Matt and I are going to talk about the process of this ripped out journal page to a designed printable I feel like a professional podcast now that you guys at home can print at home if you are interested at all in this hopefully easy way to shape your 2024. Steve, you excited? Uh, yeah, I was just looking over that yeah. and uh, I'm, I'm very excited to you know dig into it and maybe bring it to Kelly and say, hey, let's talk about 2024. I know. Well, I, hopefully it is uh, relatively easy to put to fill in the blank and then throw on your refrigerator like we do. And if nothing else, if you guys just look at it throughout 2024 and be like, oh yeah, I wanted to do that. I hope it's an encouragement, but we're going to break it down. Are you excited, Matt? Mm -hmm. I am. I'm, I'm excited for a, a readable version too. <laughs> <laughs> Our kids were reading my ripped out of journal page and they did not know like stewardship, for example, or physical. They were like, what does spaceship mean? <laughs> they couldn't read it. Okay, we don't have a question of the week, guys. It's just the three of us in here, and already I feel us going off the rails, which is always my favorite. I'm yeah. not going to lie. Yeah. But speaking of my kids, can we talk for a hot second? If you're watching this on YouTube, my kids recently said <laughs> to me, this is going to be our question of the week for you guys. You can just respond in real time. Just message me on Instagram right now. <laughs> my kids said, Mom, I said what? Like, we have to tell you something really hard to hear. And I was like, what are they going to say? I literally, my jet, my heart goes into my stomach. And I'm like, oh, no, they're going to confront me about what a horrible parent I am. <laughs> they go, <laughs> they go, mom, when you're not wearing makeup, you look like Steve O'Dell. <laughs> and then they start cracking up. And for months now, months, now the four-year-old's in on He's like, Steve O'Dell, Steve O'Dell. And then you walk in today with matching glasses, yeah. basically. We have like... And I was like, Steve, we're sending a picture. My kids have got to see this. So the question of the week is, do I look like Steve O'Dell? <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear from you. <laughs> do you think this is weird for you? You're um, married to me and we've been joking. Yeah. Steve's your dad. Our I mean, the, the thing is, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> right. This is going to you're going to be in the I, next I'm book. I'm not quite sure how I feel about uh, being like a, a tease or an insult to you. Oh, that's true. For, for your kids. You oh, know, Steve, like, I'm sorry. I, I mean, <laughs> I'm just not sure how I, how I feel about it, but. I'm so sorry. I love your kids, so. I it's think, fine. I don't know who's getting the worst <laughs> diss or the better diss here. I don't know, Steve. Right. We just both need therapy. Matt, you're the therapist. Anyway. No, that would be a dual relationship. I can't step into that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're doing great. Let's go ahead and talk about the year. <laughs> and next year. Okay. <sighs> I can't look at you anymore, Steve. <laughs> Sorry. Just... Okay. Don't hide your, your beautiful face. <laughs> 
Okay, guys, did you have, in all seriousness, did you have a theme for 2023? Uh, Steve, I remember you had like 75 words, I think. You had like a paragraph. Uh, yes. Okay. How was, what was generally the paragraph yeah, the, and the, how to go? The, the central thing about it was um, the Lord's presence, like being in his presence. Oh, yeah. Um, I started out, you know, just praying for purpose. And I was like, well, um, you know, if you look at, uh, you know, any kind of like commissioning in the Bible, a, a, a person needs to be set apart, you know, uh, and, and purified, I guess. So I was like, well, I, I was praying, Lord, purify us for your purposes. And then I was like, and then make us prosper in that. And mm. I realized these are all peas. Yeah. So, and then I was like, oh, there's also pruning that happens in that. And so we'll pray for that too. And Ooh, don't pray for that. I know, I know. <laughs> Anyway, uh, it ended up in a place of peace, but I realized, oh, it's being in his presence that that, that process happens. Mm. So presence kind of became what it was about. And I don't know. I mean, I think there were times throughout this year that, I, if I'm honest, God felt really distant. Yeah. And um, then I realized I was longing for his presence, which is, I think, a good Ooh. place to be. So mm-hmm. I think, you know... Um, I'm still processing it, but another P uh, yes. Right. Anyway, I don't know where it'll go this year to be honest. Yeah. Um, but Kelly and I are going to work through your, um, uh... goals for 2024. Yes. Yeah. Uh, thanks for being honest in that. And I really like, I feel like that was a growth word. What you said, you're like longing for God's presence. I've heard yeah. that I'm sure here, but I was like, Ooh, that felt like whatever oh, to sure. affirm you, for the sure. like longing for God's presence. I love that. All right, Matt Krieg, what was our theme for last year? So our theme was to be nurtured and sought by God um, and to seek him and to nurture and seek others. Yeah. And so, yeah, there was a a bunch of different ways that we tried to do that, which we, I'm sure we'll dive into. Well, and I'll just start um, by saying, how did we come up with our theme? Like, so we've talked on this podcast before, like, oh, word for the year. And that's kind of, I mean, it can just be being quiet and asking the Lord for a word. And maybe it is from the Lord. Maybe it's from the lasagna we ate last night. (laughs) My kids are very into Garfield right now. And Mm. he loves lasagna. So that's in my head. Anyway, uh, we... This year, we this last year for 2023, we looked through core needs. And if you guys look at the show notes, if you want to follow along a little bit as we're reflecting and thinking about how to shape our 2024, I have a list of the core needs there. We've talked uh, about each of them. We've done a series. I will also link to our core needs series. But those two words, nurtured and sought, when we talk about core needs, these are things before the fall that we believe God put inside of us, these longings to be uh, met in him. And we look through creation to the creator who is the need meter of our soul. And so when Matt and I were praying and thinking about last year um, and, and how we were praying and thinking, this was not like we took a vacation like we did this year to think and pray through it. This was like, hey, hon, any words for the year you want to focus on? And it was that level of intentionality. But Matt, Matt looked through the list of 10, which again will be in the show notes, and he came up with sought or mm-hmm. desired. Why Why was that an important one this year? And how did you see it uh, playing out this year, that seeking from God of you? Mm-hmm. Well, I think especially coming out of where we were last year, with just so much uncertainty with, with health and everything, it was like we were grasping for anything mm-hmm. to, to kind of stabilize um, and so for me, like to, to focus on God seeking of me as well as my need to seek him and to not look to other things for that stability, um, was probably the, the primary catalyst. There was just so much uncertainty and needing, needing to make sure I was turning my head toward God as opposed mm-hmm. to, I mean, I know at one point I was considering buying like a Nintendo Switch and the Harry Potter game that was coming out. And I was like, "Uh, that's a really bad idea for me, given all the like emotion that I would love to avoid. I could have easily just turned to that. Mm -hmm. And so deciding not to do that in order to remind myself like, hey, no, go to God, take this pain, take this kind of sorrow and fear and uncertainty to him. Mm -hmm. And I, Matt picked the word sought and I picked the word nurtured. And again, I'm sure for anyone listening, anniversaries are always hard, aren't they, of 
whatever, if they're bad anniversaries. Mm. And so a year ago, I was nosediving physically with my health um, and not understanding why. And so that word nurtured, I was learning that internally because I was still healing from emotional burnout from this challenging job that we do. Um, And then my body was breaking down. And I was like, I really need to experience not... uh, I needed my brain, like you said, Matt, to not go to a default of God, why are you doing this to me? Although it's okay to ask that question. But to be like, no, God still nurtures me. Even when doctors can feel cold and my life can feel scary, he still nurtures me. So I chose that word when I looked and prayed through the list because... I needed to experience that from God. And then um, if you look in the template that we have linked, or if we just reflect on how we wrote our our theme sentence for the year, for 23, uh, we don't want to just experience it from God. We wanted to seek him back, but then also nurture and seek others. So that was a nice theme we wrote. But then Mm -hmm. uh, if you guys have been a podcast listener for any amount of time, or if you read our book, An Impossible Marriage, you know that we talk about different areas of life. It's so easy to try and simplify our life into like, I don't know, like eating, sleeping, reproducing. I don't know, like these different, (laughs) the the more carnal, uh, what's it called? Your reptilian brain. Like, it's just easy to be like work and not work. Mm. Um, but instead of actually seeing it for the beautiful garden of life that it is. And so we've named these different areas of life. We call them different gardens. And so and if I can yeah, just, please jump uh, in, Steve, make a pitch oh. <laughs> for the book, the, the way that they, uh, the way that you guys, you know, kind of unpack that is worth a read oh uh, just that that whole metaphor of uh, uh tending to these gardens um if you're married you know together or if you're single you know how you tend these gardens uh was there like seven of them yep. mm-hmm. um you know things like your social life intellectual your physical life you know just stewardship anyway yeah get the book and, and and read how they uh kind of unpack that metaphor it's really good Thanks, Steve. Yeah. yeah, that's An Impossible Marriage right. is the book he's talking about. So thanks, guys. So we last for 23, again, if you're watching it on the YouTubes, I just wrote it in my journal and rip, ripped it out. Uh, and so I wrote down the the theme at the top, and then I renamed each of those gardens, those parts of life, those areas of life, because I was like, I love having a theme word or a theme verse, but then I'm like, how do I actually like live that out? Mm. I, that's that's where this is the point of this episode is like, well, let's just let's think about that. So we wrote down the different areas and um, in the printable link, we have spiritual, the spiritual life, which is, yes, it's everywhere. Intellectual. How do we want to grow intellectually, physically, our our health, the emotional places of our life? Stewardship, that can be like a little like, what's that mean? That's like God gives us gifts. He gives a lot. He gives us money. He gives us time. He gives us talents. What are we doing with that to really think through that? And then social, how are we interacting with other people? And so, um, Matt, I'd love for you to think about last year, Mm -hmm. where did we do well and where's still some improvement? Yeah. I mean, I I think we, last year when we, we wrote down some of these goals and we came up with kind of some tangible ways of trying to engage with those different areas. Like one being, we wanted to pray for, for good Christian friendships for our kids because we looked around and realized like, man, they weren't really engaging socially with other Christians. Um, Which is okay. And I was glad we were glad for like the missional relationships they have. They go to public school. It's great, but mm -hmm. we become like who we are around and it's, we need yeah, we wanted we wanted places for them to be kind of poured into as mm-hmm. well from a spiritual aspect, aside from in, you know, family. Mm-hmm. And and so like that was one of the areas where we actively both prayed. I think you probably more than me, but at one point I like got on the train and was like, No, I really need to be praying for mm-hmm. this and and the girls were able to find um like a, a gyms group that, that they jumped gyms into. Gyms is like girls everywhere making Jesus uh, I don't know. It used to be called Calvinettes, but that <laughs> we got producer Zach, he's uh, waving his hands around. I don't know. I think that was a little too military, but it's it's a girls group. It's similar to Awana. It's similar to, they've done Girl Scouts, but this is the uh, reformed version mm-hmm. of Girl mm-hmm. Scouts. 
Yeah. But they've, they've been able to connect with, with other, other girls and, mm-hmm. and learn and just really engage in kind of Christian community, which has been really cool because even, even, I would say even at church, it's been hard just because, well, some of the boys are a lot more active than, mm-hmm. than they are. Our girls are very thoughtful. And so like in like youth group with, with, you know, second, third, fourth grade boys, when they're just going crazy, our girls are like standing in the sidelines being like, what is happening here? Right. Which not all boys are like not, that. Not, not all, all boys, but I mean, you, you have a wide range of mm-hmm. personalities mm-hmm. in a youth group. And so like for the more introverted, the more guarded, it's just harder to connect that way. Yeah. And so for them to find a place where it was a little bit more quiet and, and thoughtful, I guess, mm-hmm. was, was just definitely much more approachable for them. So that was, that was one of the ways that we were actively praying and we actively saw like God move mm. in the midst of it. And then intellectual Steve, it was a year ago, December 22 of 2022. Remember that? Yeah. You reached out, you're like, Hey, so we've been on hiatus of the podcast. Right. And you're like, Ugh. yeah. Uh, yeah, that was that was pretty cool. I um, wanted to approach leadership here at WCSG Radio about maybe um, you know taking on the podcast and some of the expense and some of the you know behind the scenes work. And I just missed seeing you guys. I know you do. <laughs> and uh, so before I did that, I wanted to you know see how you guys felt mm-hmm. about that and. Anyway, the rest is history. Has it been is. a year's worth of history now. It's crazy town, but that yeah. got added to our list to pray about. But it, it, I added it in the intellectual sphere because there's a lot of reading we do here, and it really has been so good for yes, of course, our hearts, our spiritual life. But for me, my intellectual, it's really a good spot. That was something we prayed about. Stewardship, that was another area, and so our kids, Matt, I feel like you need to talk about this one. <laughs> Um, well, if, if you know kids, they're not necessarily easy to um, get motivated to serve others. And, and so that was one of the places where we really wanted to instill more of a service attitude um, in the family. And, and I think part of it just being selfish is we're tired. <laughs> <laughs> and so like to, to really recognize like, okay, they are old enough to, to be able to contribute to the kind of running and maintenance of the home. And if that means, I mean, it, it started out as just, hey, kids, help me unload the dishwasher, mm-hmm. you know, every morning, you know, rather than me just doing it and feeling like, oh, I wake up and I have to start serving and then I'm serving until 10 p.m. and then I go to sleep, you know, like to, to have more of the camaraderie of we're all serving together. For those of you listening, you may be like, oh, my goodness, my kids have been cleaning the house and bathroom since they were four years old. And you're like, why is this on a list? And some of you are like, wait, what? I just (laughs) as a parent, things don't just happen naturally. Like what happens naturally is chaos, disorder, fighting. But like. I I just feel like as a parent, don't you, Steve, do you still feel like this? Like you're just like figuring it out. And like, is it, is it some point someone else going to come in, like take over and like do the teaching of them? Do you ever feel like that? Yeah. I mean, I feel, I, I, I think that I didn't realize, and I still don't know for sure if my parents were intentional at all. Yeah. And we turned out fine. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> it worked out, uh, me and my siblings. So I think that I kind of was like, uh, yeah, life takes care of that. Mm-hmm. Um, not so much. But yeah. <laughs> I I've, know. I've got a couple at home that I'm like, I'm taking notes from you guys with oh, your shut up. <laughs> little kids with my t- 20 and 22 year old. Like, oh yeah, maybe that's a good idea. <laughs> well, I think... I, I can so have imposter syndrome as a mom, as a parent, maybe as a person, really, whatever, I'll bring that to my therapist. But with the kids, I was I think we just woke up and I was like, oh my goodness, it's like a waking up every day where I'm like, who is going to teach them to clean? I was like, that's mm-hmm. us, Matt. We got to teach them to do it. So this, this wasn't a, all of a sudden we wrote all these things down and they were nailing it. It was a very slow and like, okay, let's start with the dishwasher and it's been good for them to, mm-hmm. to learn a little bit at a time. Mm-hmm. Um, well, and yeah, and then ahead. like the, the awesome thing is our youngest, Ellis, who's four, who's who like, he'll help with the silverware or whatever, but he's like, actually, you're starting to see this attitude of he loves to serve. Like yeah. he, he loves to like help clean the bathrooms or help 
pass out the Halloween candy or help. Mm. Like, I mean, he just wa- is starting to get this attitude of wanting to step in. And I think part of that is he's seeing his older siblings do it, even <laughs> if they're, you know, somewhat complaining, like yeah. they also are getting more, more engaged in it. And, and so, and, and let's face it, we're flying by the seat of our pants here. Like <laughs> we're not childhood experts in, mm-hmm. in any sense, but like, we're trying to be intentional. We're trying to, to step into these spaces that don't come natural. The natural thing no, is go, not at all. go watch on your iPad and leave me alone so I can get this done 100%. Mm. is a whole lot easier, but it ultimately long-term won't create kind of what, what we're hoping to create, which is more of a whole system of everyone's contributing, everyone's helping. Yeah, I cannot overstate how normal Matt and I are and how flying by the seats of our pants we are uh, (laughs) and just waking up to, oh, shoot, no one else is going to do this. God help us to take even one little step. Hmm. Any other areas, uh, any other gardens you feel like went well? This year, oh Matt, you got to talk maybe about you can, working. Maybe out. The, you can talk about the ones that could have gone better yeah. to make the rest of us feel better. We will. Yeah. <laughs> Most there was about sixty percent, sixty percent at least. <laughs> but what were you saying to Matt? Matt, exercise. This is like a real tender place. Can you talk about it for yourself? Um. So well, it's funny because. The word that I chose was saw. The word that you chose was nurture. And nurture, yeah. Um, But then actually one of the biggest places of growth for me personally was uh, kind of self-nurture physically. Um, Started going to the gym and and kind of have tried in the past to go to the gym. Always hated it. Would last like two weeks and then be like, I give up. But but this year was something that I, I really started to find that this is the place where I get to tend to myself. Like I'm not working with clients. I'm not, you know, getting milk for the kids. I'm not, you know, cleaning something. I'm literally just there, no headphones on, just in kind of silence and lifting, lifting weights. Um, and that became not just a physical kind of benefit for me, but like just mentally, emotionally, that was a place for me to decompress um, and actually kind of turn my attention to, okay, what's going on in me? Hmm. And then even entering kind of a prayerful yeah. place of like, okay, God, you're you're here with me too. And some of the stuff is uncomfortable and everything like lifting isn't always, I mean, you get sore, but it, it just has turned into something that that's like my I don't want to call it my me space, but it's been like very tangible space where I get to unplug and, and kind of bring myself to God, I guess. Wow. Isn't that really powerful? Yeah. Yeah. And then for him to vulnerably a care for himself, we were reflecting on this recently, but then he invited some of his fellow therapists to do a Spartan race. And that to me, I just had to reflect back to Matt recently. I was like, you a taking time for yourself and not like apologizing the whole time for it and me being resentful the whole time (laughs) for it god helping me but then him taking time for himself but then he invited people into this now like sacred space which with your similar personality types i can imagine that would be a challenge yeah like i was so proud of him for saying we're gonna do this hard spartan race and he invited people into this tender place of his heart and i was super proud of him and it was super fun and it was just, super just fun. gonna throw that out there it was like my most fun thing of the year That's probably awesome. where we didn't do so great and uh could grow um Matt again, do you want to take this one? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so one of the big ones was I, I mean, I work at, at work and I see a lot of people each week, but then at the end of the night, I would tend to bring my notes home and do all my notes at the end of the night. So the, the stewardship part of the year I had of its time of my time was to try and say, Hey, don't do any notes at home. Like try to leave work at work. And that was something that, I mean, just consistently, yeah. Uh, did not happen. Even even you know the last two nights, I've I've brought home notes and just gotten home and like I'm so tired. Once the kids are in bed, notes are notes are getting done. Um, and so that's still still an area of growth to to be able to to set that aside and real quick. At work. How do you not go to shame or legalism with that <laughs> in particular? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, okay, I don't, I don't think I'm prone to legalism in it. 
Because, I usually take that one for the team. Because, <laughs> That's usually me. Because um, I've obviously been not following that rule. Um, <laughs> but yeah, shame, I think, honestly, I think it's been mostly like out of sight, out of mind. I haven't kept my eyes on the why Ooh. we want to do that. Um, and so it just feels natural. And there's, there is that urgency to like get the notes done because if I, if I let them sit, then all of a sudden I've got 37 notes that I have to do. And then I'm just going to be avoiding it and anxious the whole time. Mm. Um, and so there is that urgency to get it done. Um, and, and until I kind of, I guess, work through it and realize what is lost by doing that, because the gain is I don't, I'm, I'm caught up on my notes. I don't have to worry about it. Um, but the loss is, is usually felt here with me and Lori, um, or with me and the kids. If I'm, if I'm doing a quick go to bed for them, because I need to get to my notes and everything, then I'm not as present with them. And I I don't feel like I've sat enough in like recognizing the loss to, to actually feel a shame about it, which I guess I don't want to feel shame, but like conviction. Yeah. I, I, I feel like there's still some paying attention to it that I need to do. Thanks for diving into that. Yeah. Cause I think that's important is like why instead of, cause that's how it would move to legalism or shame is if it's just a rote set of, well, I wrote it on the stupid list and there it is and I have to do it <laughs> instead of like, no, I actually do want this. Uh, so for me, an area, and again, we probably did pretty well on maybe 40% of the 15 things we wrote down, but 60% I was like, eh. So here, we'll just talk about two of them uh, to not go down the shame alley, but emotional garden for me to laugh more and play more games. We did that a little bit last year, but my default is, like we said, I think before we started recording, maybe also on this, but it's like you can, the default of life is to chase fires and try and put them out. Right. And that's generally, that's how we were living. That's how we can mostly live. And I just don't want to do that all the time. Mm. And so chasing fires, it's hard to play and laugh. And our kids, especially one of them, God made her very fun. (laughs) And one of my fears for her is having me as a mom who can be so serious and Mm. thoughtful. And she has a very serious older sister is, um, and also fun, but just that that she would think that God is boring and serious. Like I want her to see the playful side of God. And so that starts with me modeling and saying that even out loud is you were made good and your desire for fun is a good thing. So I want to do that more uh, with the kids in a not shamey way, but in a, Mm -hmm. because I want her to know that part of God. Mm Mm-hmm. So this year. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to talk about how you guys are approaching um, planning the yeah. year ahead. And and so as you do that, like, what was it you learned from this last year that maybe informed the yeah. way you're planning this coming year? I can start. Did anyone jump? Mm-hmm. Okay. I think I learned I like the outline. This was this I'm again I'm holding it up for YouTube our family 2023 goals just a ripped out piece of paper with a short sentence on top and of our nurtured and sought by God nurture and seek him and others with the gardens and some scratch uh goals. I loved looking that at that throughout the year because I'd be like, "Oh yeah." And then I would say a prayer for Christian friends for the kids or think about um just even how I can be nurtured by God and nurture others. And so that was the biggest thing for me is I was like, "Oh, My, my personality that likes to zig if someone tells me to zag, (laughs) I I actually liked this gentle structure Mm. that was just on the refrigerator to think about. Mm. What about you, Matt? Yeah. I mean, I, I like having the, just the thoughtfulness of like actually thinking, okay, what is the direction or what is the focus? How do I remain more, um, I don't know, focused for the year, like instead of just being scatterbrained and, and taking what's coming at me in the immediate. Um, and so having, having it on the fridge, I think it was good. I, I didn't stop and look at it very often because honestly it's your handwriting. And so that signals to me, Oh, that's for Lori. Um, <laughs> that just illegible. Well, no, I mean, I, I can stop and I can read it. 
Um, but I think honestly, I'm I'm excited to see how the printout goes yeah. for us because right. then I'm I'm going to say like, oh wait, that's not just a for Lori thing. That is like our kind of family policy. That's our family goals for this year. And so I'm excited to see like just what that different visual does does just for keeping me kind of attuned to it. And for those listening who don't have kids, are not married, uh, this can totally totally be done on your own or with uh, you can with each section like the spiritual, intellectual, physical. You could do here's a personal goal, here's a roommate goal, here's a church goal, or just do all personal or however you want to mm-hmm. break it down. But it's definitely capable. I know we're. This is very family focused, so forgive us for that. But hopefully what we're saying here can also be uh, applicable across the board here. Um, But I would like to just focus in, Steve, you asked like what we want to do differently. If we can look at the emotional garden, because I feel like that is a space Matt and I really, um, as we took more time to pray about a word, um, which I actually picked uh, love as a core need. Um, that I want to focus in on, but I also added in, you guys can do whatever you want. You can change your uh, statement, the template that we gave you, but we said to practice the presence of God and to know more of the love of Christ, the redeemer. So Matt's word was presence. Mine was love, but then I also really wanted to get to know Jesus as redeemer. And that will maybe come in a little bit more as we talk about the emotional garden. But Matt, can you talk about presence, which was totally your word for 23, Steve? Yeah, Yeah. Any reason you picked presence this year? Um, well, because that was the word that came <laughs> when I was praying. So, I mean, that was the big thing, like, but to, to be present, to not be distracted, um, to be available. And I think one of the primary ways is, is with the kids, um, you know, the days that I work late, it's like, I'm coming home and I'm interrupting the bedtime routine, you know, and in the morning I'm the I don't want to say the slave driver, but, but one of the people who's like, come on, time to get ready, time for school. Let's Mm -hmm. go, let's go, let's go. Um, and so really wanting to protect space of being able to sit down, to, to be together, to, to let them see like me in a light that is not go, go, go. We have something to do, but like, I just want to be with you. So on that theme, let's just, we're going to look at one more piece and then we're going to let the audience, uh, just uh, marinate on this. Um, but on, in the emotional garden in particular, Mm -hmm. I was really struck by, based on what you just said, you Mm -hmm. want to experience presence with God and with others. Um, how in the, specifically the emotional area of your life, what was a goal specifically there based on that vision? Yeah. So the, the specific thing that I feel like I need to work on is being more encouraging and affirming, um, of the people around me. I I think good things about the people around me. I don't often say them. Mm -hmm. Uh, Words of affirmation has never been a strong suit. Mm -hmm. Um, But I am, you know, when you're, when you're with someone, if the, if the message you consistently get is the, the critique or the, here's what we could do better. It, even if it's not being, if it's not meant to be critical, it can start to feel like a critical relationship. And so, um, I want our kids to know that I love them, that that I'm proud of them, that I see good in them. I want the same for you mm-hmm. to know, for you to know that I love you and I see the work that you're doing and that I'm proud of you. And mm-hmm. I, I want to be more affirming, more comfortable in that um, and more expressive of, of those things. And then how are you not just, I just keep emphasizing this because I feel it in my heart. How are you when you see it on the fridge? And you know you just said something, 10 critical things. How are you not going to go to shame when you see it there as like, mm-hmm. shoot, that was a goal of mine? Well, if I can say an affirming thing, that's better than what I would have done last week. Ah, that's good. <laughs> so um, to know that like just because there's growth doesn't, doesn't mean that I'm a bad person. Like the, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. It's easy to focus on critical things. Mm. Um, but to turn attention to those things of like what we can be proud of, what we can be grateful for. I mean, this is something I tell to my clients all the time. Um, and it's something I need to practice myself. That's good, Matt. Mm -hmm. For me, this is actually kind of an emotional intellectual combo, Um, but I've been really praying for a mentor. I'm actually, I mentioned, I'll bring this to my therapist, but I'm actually not in therapy right now, which 
I have been many times, but I am in a season where I am looking for healthy, as healthy as we can be, female role models who are leaders. And I, I'm just looking for an embodiment of um, what it looks like to not be this angry feminism that I'm seeing in Christendom right now that's really like you would think maybe with my story and with my drivenness like I'd be drawn toward towards the patriarchy uh but if if people try and approach me with that it's actually a big turn off and I'm also not looking for very passive submissive femininity which is I don't know if it's growing, but it's still there. Mm. And so I'm not looking for Jesus the Christ in a female form, but I am looking for um, a mentor to help me sort through what it means to be a woman and a female leader uh, who is conforming herself into the image of Christ and uh, can do that with confidence. So I haven't talked about that on the podcast at all, but that's a lot of my internal work that I've been doing. And so I'm looking for more uh, embodied witnesses of that. So I've got some feelers out there. Hopefully that will happen. That's really cool. Thanks. Because I think a lot of people, I I mean, I think you have and have had people you mentor and a yeah. lot of people look to you mm-hmm. in that role. And so to know that like, no matter where we're at on our journey, we also, we continue to need people ahead of us. Yeah. Yeah. I really I feel it. Steve, based on what we shared, any thoughts or um, yeah. processing you're going through? Yeah, a lot. So much. Um, I think the primary thing that I'm noticing that I just really appreciate, you talked about, you know, putting out fires. Mm-hmm. And I think we all kind of know that like, you know, there's, there's important things and there's urgent things. And mm. so often we're just like magnetically drawn to the urgent Always. things. And that's where we kind of spend most of our time. And um, if we could somehow break out of that knee jerk response and, and really focus more on the important things and process and even answer the question, what are the important things and how do we intentionally uh, spend our attention and time and resources on that? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that, a lot of times the urgent things kind of like subside, but until we take our focus off that and on the more important things, the urgent things are always going to be there. So that's what I'm hearing is you guys like intentionally focusing on what's important and answering that question together mm-hmm. like inspires me to like have a conversation with Kelly about like how this coming year do we intentionally focus on and agree on and then focus on Mm -hmm. what's important? Um, Because I feel like there's been a lot of urgent things in our life this Mm -hmm. past year. And so this is just really inspiring me. I think that's the thing that stands out the most. Oh, thanks, Steve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the tyranny of the urgent. Yeah. Well, uh, friends listening, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, I will, again, I'll link to the Core Needs series, the Garden series we did. I will link to the printout. You are welcome to print it, our our Impossible Marriage book. We have a question of the week for next time, but it's actually last time's question of the week because we uh, already recorded next week's episode with Danny Truick. It's really great on the value of singleness, which there's so much. Uh, So you guys will hear that next next time. Uh, but guys, thanks so much for joining us today. Let us know what you think. Please tell me if you think I am Steve Odell's twin. <laughs> I will take, I will screenshot all your answers and show them to my kids. <laughs> uh, but thank you so much to WCSG for hosting us today and all the days to the Zach of all trades and his amazing intern Delaney. And for all of us here at the Hold My Heart podcast, we will see you with our four eyes next time. <laughs>